Nine years ago, when I was four, I started dancing, and I began with the basics ballet. But a few years later, I quit, because although I knew I loved to dance, I wasn't exactly that sweet little girl who could stay in the same position and dance to classical music without being a little troublesome. So I decided to switch things up, and I took hip hop, which turned out to be one of the best decisions that I'd ever made. It took a while for me to figure out what dance was and how I wanted to express all the emotions that rushed up to me. Dance isn't just fluttering around to the beat of the music. It's a way to tell stories and express all the emotions, like happiness, rage, excitement, grief, and all the other emotions that, rush, that one goes through. Along with my research, a specific story stood out to me. For nearly a decade, a dancer coped her way through a crisis of a lifetime that she never expected. Her hair was falling out, she had no strength or energy, and to what seemed to her, she looked like death. She was diagnosed with an eating disorder, and it took her over eight years to recover. For nearly 2,920 days straight, she was in pain. She could only ignore all of the advice because she was too scared and too obsessed. To her, thinking about gaining a pound was just as miserable as the endless pain that she suffered with. The obsessive desire to lose weight using unhealthy weight control methods is the description of an eating disorder. From a young age, we're exposed to the image that everyone is skinny. Everything we watch as a child only includes skinny characters. And generally speaking, if they're obese, they're known to be dumb and lousy. Although I don't have an eating disorder, one in five ballerinas suffer from it. Ballerinas can be diagnosed within the numerous types of eating disorders out there, such as anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa, and anorexia athletica. All of these are petrifying, and they're just some of the many types of eating disorders out there. They can cause heart failures, kidney failures, organ failures, anemia, and even bone loss. No one truly knows what someone is going through except themselves. From what my friends and I have seen through dance, it's hard to tell if someone has an eating disorder or not. A person with an eating disorder blends in with their peers because of their similar body shapes. They either have fast metabolisms or they work out for strength, which is necessary in dance. Some of them are in critical situations where they can't stop thinking about how skinny and perfect they need to be. Sometimes they'll even have suicidal thoughts. As a dancer, it's stereotypical to be thin especially as a ballerina. Dancers will do anything to lose weight because they believe that being a ballerina means that they need to be skinny and light in order for the male dancer to lift them up or so that they could look like a natural within the ballet community. They will often end up fasting for an extended period of time or they will constantly work out even after their dance classes. Size doesn't matter. You tell a story and express your emotions in dance. No one should have to go to the extent of pressuring themselves to be so skinny in order to do that. Unfortunately, eating disorders aren't only common amongst dancers. It's also very prevalent amongst teenagers as well. Over 50% of teenage girls and 30% of teenage boys use unhealthy weight control methods. Some of them will think that losing weight, losing weight with unhealthy diets will change them and that their flaws will disappear. But in reality, it ruins your life for who knows how long. It could take a week, a month, a year, or even a decade to recover. As one girl stated, I had no idea up to 24 million people in the United States have some type of eating disorder. About 12 million of those people meet the cr criteria for clinical depression. I had no idea I was not alone when all of this started 10 years ago. I had no idea beauty comes in every size, and I had no idea everything gets better. Every 62 minutes, someone dies from an eating disorder. Nearly four out of 10 Americans have eating disorders or know someone who does, and only one out of 10 people who suffers from an eating disorder gets treated. Eating disorders are dangerous, in fact deadly, and it's not worth taking the risks of dying just to have a perfect body. If anyone is going through an eating disorder, the best thing to do is to get help, because although it may be the last thing that someone would want, they're in a position where it depends on their life. We all live with a purpose, and that purpose isn't just to have a perfect body. Don't let the numbers on a scale take control of you. Thank you.